The United States government is appearing to endorse ketogenic diets, or at least they're open to it. That's the story we're talking about today because by the very fact that they are willing to look into the ketogenic diet and fund it is a tremendous victory for anyone who advocates or follows anything on the proper human diet spectrum. That's simply undeniable. I've said it before and I'll say it again. Carnivore, keto, and everything else related to them are winning the battle where it counts, with regular people and with those agencies and companies that really care about the financial cost of health, at least our own financial cost of health. We are winning, as evident by the collapsing stock price of Beyond Meat. We are winning, as evidenced by the increasing demand for American beef well beyond America's own shores. We are winning because of the increasing screeching coming from the plant-based zealots who want to force their way of life on everyone else using political and economic power to do so. I don't care what they eat. They're free to eat as they like, but please don't try to make me do it. Our story today comes from the, the Ohio State University news website, which ran this headline. Can achieving beneficial ketone levels improve metabolic health in the military? Ohio State scientists will seek answers with a $10 million Department of Defense grant. So in grad school, I worked on an externally funded grant research project, not nearly of that scale or importance, but I do know how important research grants are to a university. And the bigger the grant, the more important it is. And $10 million is not chump change in the eye of a university, even to an R1 research school. This suggests that the Department of Defense is serious enough to put real money behind their interest even if $10 million isn't exactly real money to the U.S. Department of Defense. They understand that universities see that as real money. From the article, quote, A series of upcoming studies will explore whether the grind of active duty military life and veterans' disproportionately high incidence of chronic illness could be tamed by lifestyle interventions designed to achieve a metabolic state of nutritional ketosis. This work, led by Ohio State University exercise science and biomedical researchers, is funded by a $10 million grant from a U.S. Department of Defense program focused on improving the health of military service members, veterans, and the American public. Many Americans, including a significant number of military service members, and especially veterans, are suffering from poor metabolic health, said Principal Investigator Jeff Volek, professor of human sciences at Ohio State. Despite billions of dollars in investments by the private and public sectors, traditional drug and lifestyle treatments have had limited success in curtailing the complications attributed to poor metabolic health, which include disrupted sleep, obesity, type 2 diabetes, heart failure, and chronic kidney disease. We expect that whatever we find here will have huge relevance across the board both within and outside the military. Two plus decades of studies have included Volex findings that the very low carbohydrate slash high fat ketogenic diet, which converts fat into ketones used by cells in the body and brain as an alternative to glucose, does not drive up saturated fat in the blood, can help endurance athletes burn fat and holds promise at keeping soldiers fit for service. The popularity of the diet and scientific evidence of its health benefits and weight loss results has spawned the development and the marketing of products that can be ingested to rapidly elevate blood ketones without a change in eating habits. A big part of the grant is studying both of those strategies to augment ketosis, the ketogenic diet and ketone-based beverages, Volek said. The ketone drinks formulated as ketone esters are designed to put the body in nutritional ketosis. The human body's state when it has greater access to ketones as both a fuel and signaling molecule. Does the ketogenic diet produce different effects than the ketone esters? Is one better than the other? My work has found the ketogenic diet provides robust health benefits, but there could be some health benefits attributed to taking ketones and not changing the diet. It's a whole new area of investigation, end quote. I'm all for it, I really am, because a big part of the study is testing ketone esters and whether they're better than being in a state of nutritional ketosis. Esters, according to the research behind the study, put you into a state of nutritional ketosis without being on a ketogenic diet, and they want to know if the diet is better 
or if the exogenous ketones, which is essentially what they're talking about, are better. I'm going to go out on a limb and suggest that the diet is better if formulated properly. But anyone who is watching this who has done any diet on the ketogenic spectrum from keto on one end to the lion diet on the other could probably tell you that. But this isn't the first time the U.S. government has looked into studies like this. Back in 2017, NASA tested the ketogenic diet to see if it was ideal for astronauts, leading many observers to tell Elon Musk that he should send his Mars and other space explorers into space on a keto diet. Why? Insider.com in 2017 talked about how very few high-quality studies there were on people on a ketogenic diet, which is just objectively true. Human subjects research is tricky, especially on the long-term effects of nutrition on people, since you cannot ethically or even logistically restrict how and what people eat for long periods of time. And by long periods of time, let's like really think long-term here. Think decades. And then you understand the logistical nightmare behind getting this kind of data or the ethical problems. But their article is insightful here because the U.S. government has had an interest for a long time in this. And it's why I suspect the American Medical Association and the American Heart Association are changing their tune very quietly on saturated fat and red meat. Because despite the same government stating that they are going to pursue <laughs> cloned meats grown in a lab, if you saw my video on that earlier this week, the government is also interested in the long-term effects on ketogenic diets on government personnel. From the 2017 article about astronauts, quote, Finney and his fellow presenter, Lu Luis Burke, a sports dietitian who had a more cautious view of keto, said there's much more work to be done to understand how, if, and why a keto diet can work for some endurance athletes, and to better understand why some people excel on it while others lag. The overall takeaway is that any diet can be followed in good and bad forms, Burke said. Keto with plenty of vegetables and healthy fats is good. Dirty keto or lazy keto with a menu packed with fat bombs is bad. You've got to do it the right way if you're going to do it, she said. Finney isn't the only researcher to ponder the usefulness of keto in space. In 2017, a researcher tested the keto diet while participating in an undersea NASA experiment designed to simulate Mars living. His theory was that the diet could one day help protect people from the neurological risks of traveling in space, end quote. The neurological risks of traveling, like looking at the neurology with keto. That's important. And it's also exactly right. Most people who are successful on keto avoided fat bombs or any of that stuff. If you're trying to lose weight, the last thing you should stick down your gullet while sticking to the general keto plan, ketogenic diet plan is anything that can make it easy to consume hundreds of grams of fat with some, some amount of carbs in it in a short period of time. Have you ever seen like, you know, freezer dark chocolate coconut oil fat bombs? You see them at the grocery stores. I've seen them and I already know that back when I did keto before I went carnivore, I could have eaten a lot of them before getting full. They're a terrible idea for most people most of the time. But people rely on them and then wonder why their ketogenic diet fails them. So for once, it is good to see government researchers actually using some sense when it comes to nutrition and how to do things properly, especially if it ends up giving us enough evidence to finally shelve the exogenous ketone industry once and for all. And I'll be the first to tell you, if it turns out that exogenous ketones are actually good for you, well, that's good to know as well, though, as you can tell, I'm a bit skeptical of them being very good. One thing is for certain, and the article acknowledges this. Military personnel have at least the same levels of metabolic damage as the rest of the population, if not worse, especially among veterans. And this, you know, Among the active duty population, this is due to very short meal breaks and fast food being widely available on or near military bases. There's a military base not far from me, and every time I drive past it, it's like you're driving through Fast Food Central. And then that says nothing about MREs or the state of the chow hall itself, which isn't exactly animal-based either. We're all familiar with the odd stereotype of the active duty person who has a hard time staying in shape. Those stereotypes are unfortunately rooted in a sad reality of poor diet imposed by the government on people who just don't have many other options in many cases. So a study like this may have some wide ranging consequences. First for active duty personnel and second into the greater civilian population as the government begins to assess the data that is collected, especially when it's policymakers doing that assessing. Things could get interesting here, especially when we consider the amount of potential profit is involved in the low-carb space, because government data in this way 
always finds its way to the private sector. But I'm curious what you think about this story. Are you optimistic at all about a university doing this kind of research? Granted, the military is paying for it, but these departments tend to have big ag funding to the departments themselves. So there may be some conflicts of interest here. But I am curious what you think, so let me know in the comments. Please like and subscribe if you haven't. It really does help, as does sharing these messages on social media. That helps a lot as well. I'm Anthony Stein, The Practical Carnivore, and thanks for your time today.